Hi once again. Last night, Starship S26 was rolled out to the launch site. This one looks a bit different from the previous Starships. It has no grid fins or heat shield tiles. It is a little weird looking Starship but I think this one is either an expendable version or the lunar version of Starship. The official SpaceX website mentions two versions of cargo Starship, one reusable and another expendable, which are mission-specific vehicles. Later in the morning, S-26 was lifted onto test stand at suborbital Pad B. Now with two Starships at the launch site, it is possible that the road closures are for Starship testing, not Booster 7. Elon is still hopeful that they can pull off a launch attempt of Starship test flight in March. He also gives some more details about the test flight. On Thursday, Booster 7 fired up its 31 engines producing about half its full power. But for the test flight, Starship will launch with only 90% of its maximum capacity. We would love to hear an explanation why it is not going to be 100% throttle at liftoff. Early this morning, 10 minutes after midnight, SpaceX launched its 10th mission of the year. Starlink Group 5-4 mission was launched from SLC-40 at Cape in Florida. This was the 12th flight of this first stage Falcon 9 booster supporting this mission. Engines full power and liftoff of Starlink 5-4. Stage separation. After stage separation, it successfully landed on the drone ship. Stage one landing leg deploy. Stage one landing confirmed. SpaceX still has more than five missions scheduled to launch this month. Among them is NASA's commercial crew rotation mission to the ISS. SpaceX Crew-6 mission is planned to launch no earlier than the 26th of February from Pad 39A at Kennedy Space Center. Speaking of space station, yesterday for a second time in less than two months, a Russian cargo spacecraft, Progress MS-21 was reported to suffer coolant leaks while still docked at the space station. Last year in December, a similar incident happened to Soyuz MS-22 spacecraft with coolant leaks. Due to that, currently, three astronauts are stranded in space with no option to return to Earth for now. Although the Russian space agency, Roscosmos points to micrometeoroids for the structural damage to their spacecraft, should NASA rethink about buying seats for ISS from Russia and sending American astronauts on these leaky spacecrafts? We have SpaceX's Crew Dragon that can launch astronauts to space at a much cheaper price and Boeing's new Starliner spacecraft will soon be available too. Do you think NASA should stop buying tickets to ISS from Russia? Let me know in the comments. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.